Hey everybody, it is Seiko Beercraft here. Beercraft is in full effect. Yes. We have Fanatic Harstums on this side against MC. Run by Minchul. Here, it's a PvP of the highest caliber. Don't cast myself too many PvPs, but I am sure interested in getting down on this one. Two really, really top players. We're going to see what kind of crazy shenanigans come out of this. I know the game is slightly longer and that makes it even more exciting because not too many PvPs go a little bit later. Rocking a little Canadian right now, it's not my favorite, but it was on sale, so it works good for me. Alrighty then, so PvP openings. I actually had a chance to watch quite a bit of the recent WCS Europe was happening, then America is actually happening right now as uh, I think it was just finished an hour ago as I'm casting this. So I've been trying to pay a little bit more attention to some of the Protoss play. Still the race I know the least bit about. But it's one of the ones where the early game decisions in a mirror matchup have probably the greatest impact. Uh, just the ability to counter things so completely. Being able to do builds like DTs that really take advantage of cheesy, greedy people. Like There's so much stuff you can do. And then expansion timings. When can you expand? If you expand too soon... Will it get lost? You can't really hide behind a mothership core like you can maybe against in some other races. So it makes the matchup very, very exceptional. And right now, it looks like we have pretty much mirrored builds coming out from both players. We'll see if they do end up scouting their mains. It doesn't look like that's the case. You have to. If you don't scout a proxy, a gateway, you can just straight up lose unless you've got control like parting. I think he's one of the few people I've ever seen hold off like the most completely disruptive and unhappy in base proxies that I've ever seen. We have two gay two sorry two gases. No we got two gases on both sides. Three in each gas as well. So he's gonna be committing probably into something like a Stargate. We see double gases on this side. I've got to assume Stargate or moving up into some sort of Twilight tech. Harstum I might be thinking that because MC is obviously a much better player or more accomplished player I would say then he might have to try something a little bit funky. MC, renowned for his blink micro control. We'll see what he can pull off with this. Both players are scouting each other. Pretty important in this matchup. And there's, it's important to understand your timings. Because right about now is when the standard cybernetic score is just wrapping up. So this is when you're going to start seeing what the next type of tech is. And he sees the Stargate. Look guys, I called it. I've been drinking beer for a while. But anyways, we do see the Stargate going up. There is a pylon over on one side. It looks as though MC wants to get out of Stalker and chase away the Scout before he commits to whatever his next level of tech will be. That makes sense. Hopefully it's not Stargate tech. Generally, if somebody is way ahead on Stargate tech and they get out a Phoenix first and they start getting the Phoenix advantage, you just you can't really come back from that very well. Probe is retreating one way. MC is taking the long way around here. Thought he might want to drop some sort of proxy. That is not the case. He is going Twilight Tech, which is such a good standard opening. It doesn't give you any detection, which is its biggest weakness. So if there was a DT play for whatever reason, it'd be tough to deal with. But the Twilight Tech will either let him go DT, or... Let me see the stole a pro bouncing around down here. Or it will allow him to get out a blink, which will deal with oracles really well. And what I enjoy about the PvP matchup, getting out an oracle, as long as you keep it alive, right? There isn't as long as you don't see well, that was a sacrificial zealot if I ever seen one. As long as you don't lose that oracle, or the your opponent's not going to Stargate and getting Phoenixes and just shoot it down, if that oracle just bounce in it once in a while. The Protoss player is helpless. They have to keep something around because you can lose six probes even with a photon overcharge down. MC gets a full scout off. And we do see the Oracle came in here. Didn't get any kills. MC is going to have to be on the defense for a while until he kills it. We see that he is getting his blink out and chrono boosting it. While as Harstum here is deciding to throw down himself a Nexus on one gateway and one Stargate and a Robo. So this, I would consider this very greedy. He's got almost no way to defend if these three gates start just pumping out tons and tons of blink stalkers. He'd actually be in a really great spot. So Harstum is hoping to buy himself a little bit of time here with his Oracle. Even though he's not getting any kills, as long as he keeps it alive, it's always a threat. And such a big threat. An Oracle that's, you know, uncontested for a few seconds can kill off, you know, a dozen workers. Even if you pull them, he's still going to lose a handful. 
So warp gate is finished for both players. Blink's about to wrap up. Immortal's on the way. I'm pretty sure that MC is not aware. Now he's aware that there is, in fact, an expansion going down. So we'll see what his decision there is. If he's going to expand himself, which he's got a probe down here to do just that, and 400 minerals. Boom. But it's still somewhat delayed behind his opponent. There is enough energy for a photon overcharge, and that will obviously uh, get these stalkers to leave. And he shows off his blink immediately. A little surprising to me. Sometimes it's nice to hide that tech, but with an oracle bouncing around, very likely he knew that that was the case. More immortals coming out. I don't think there's any observers, but there's no real worry about that at the moment. No DT tech was played. Good chunk of stalkers, eight in total. Upgrades for the Protoss are just, they're such an afterthought. It's its not generally until they're up to two really committed bases and a long game that's really for sure defined that people decide to go for upgrades for Protoss. You just need those units in the early game. You need the economy. You need the tech. So let's look at what the income's at right now. Well, it's even still pretty much on workers, even though the opponent has had up a Nexus longer. And I think that's an interesting advantage I've seen from a lot of Korean players that have come off the pro scene, is that they've just somehow, when it looks like they should be long ways behind an economy because they didn't have out the resources earlier on, just somehow keep that consistency of always being able to produce workers even when they are producing units. Where did that oracle go? Is it dead? Uh, it died. Did he get any workers in the end? He got five. So I totally missed that he killed five workers. So if we look at the unit count being this close and killing five workers, that's that just shows the, the macro sense and game sense of MC here that he's kept even, even though his opponent got in a damage and had an access down sooner. I think that's something even amateur players have to get really good at is just remembering to keep building workers. It's surprising how soon you think you're saturated but really, you can afford a whole lot more to fit in there. So these guys are playing a no-touch Protoss style. MC's going to go for a scout. And he's starting to produce his own immortals. He doesn't have a Twilight, so he might be able to move up into a Templar Archives and get into some sort of Archon sooner. We do have the tech coming out for Colossus. Colossus are kind of that win unit for Protoss if you have enough of them out. If you have one or two, they don't really do damage fast enough to units like Immortals and Archons. And they don't have that much hit points, so they can get beat up pretty fast. I'm pretty sure I saw MC click on the Robo Bay there. So he knows what he's going up against. As I mentioned, we do have the Templar Archives coming down, which is scouted as well. So it will be Archon Immortal up against Colossus and Immortal. So it's really about the engagement. The Colossus with the range, obviously fantastic, and like blow through your meat shield of zealots. But, but, they can get micro down really good. And this is interesting to see this Stargate go down here from MC. Now I wonder if that's for Tempests. Tempests obviously counter Colossus so well. Do so much damage, shoot so far extra damage against any type of uh, massive units. So I think that's what it's going to be for. He could go for something like Phoenix to be able to pick up Immortals and be able to shoot at the Colossus. But I don't think it would be worth the investment necessarily. Both players are about the same foot for upgrades. Not too surprisingly, nobody's really gotten down a base earlier than this. Harstam obviously feels that he's got a pretty good unit comp. He's not too worried about getting attacked anytime too soon. He's even ahead in supply, obviously he doesn't know that. So taking this third is very interesting, and so it depends on how soon MC notices this as to what his reaction really should be. We'll see if this Phoenix manages to pick it up that there is a third base. He should sweep south and pick that up. Cannon's going down in the mineral lines, I think that's smart. Does he go south? He does not, so he does not know yet about this nexus going on down at the bottom here. Which is a bit unfortunate. And yeah, we do see that the fleet bacon is going down for Tempests. I don't mind the cannons coming in place here. Just to be able to help deal with any type of warp-ins, any type of run-by play. If you've got a few extra minerals, 
not everybody does. But if you have a few extra minerals, it's sometimes nice to throw down a little bit of certainty. Protoss armies generally move in a big pile. If you got to keep, you know, a half dozen stalkers at home to keep yourself safe, that's a much weaker army than what you would have if it was all together. Another bunch of gateways going down. These guys really have not attacked each other this whole game. So I was hoping that this longer Protoss game was just non-stop action, mega. But it appears as though it's more about who's going to build up a sicker army and then crush face. So Tempests are still coming out. How many Colossus? We've got one more on the way, one finished here, two here. So he's going to go up to four Colossus. Tempests, once again, make really damn fast. 60 seconds, for anybody who's paying attention to Day 9 who loves pointing out just how great they are. They make faster than Colossus do, they shoot further, do incredible damage, and I'm pretty sure it was scouted. I think that was what was happening there. Ooh, Warp Prism. Me likey. Lots of probes are going down in here. Fortunately, MC isn't doing a really good attack move on the probes, loses the Warp Prism. What did he end up getting done? They actually only got two workers in all of that. I thought there was more damage that was going to be done. Army slightly split up. Smart move by MC to try to do a two-prong attack. That drop in the main. If it got lots of damage in, that would have been great. He was hoping to pull the army of Harstam out of the way so he could move in and do damage. And I think that's something that was one of the first big tactics I learned playing amateur side was being able to multitask attacks. So many people like Platinum League and Lower keep all their units essentially on a hotkey. Such as the hotkey here. And the problem with that is that obviously when you want to defend something you go hotkey and attack in that direction. Difficulty with that is that if you attack in two directions you can hurt things a lot. Which is why playing Terran as I started getting better at multitasking was so good. If you can drop in so many different directions and do so much damage you can really, really catch people off guard and get just great kills on their tech, great kills on their economy. A lot of stuff that uh, you generally can't do if you just have a giant bile, uh, sorry, ball and you attack with it. And I think people who have struggles against Protoss as Terran or Zerg have to learn to multitask with their attacks. Otherwise, it's almost impossible to beat like just the pure Protoss death ball. So MC does have the third base down. Nice little wall off with pylons there, stop things from getting in. He's about tied on supply. He was a little bit delayed on his base. If we look at the overall income tab, pretty good lead now for Harstam and overall workers. But as both of these players go for a max out, that's going to hurt his actual army supply. 2-1 versus 2-0. Actually, I think he just finished. No, I think he canceled it. There is a dark shrine going down right now. Is there actually detection? Oh, well, there's a Stargate, but I don't think there's actually any... Yeah, there's observers. I remember seeing observers. So, the army positioning has been scouted. There was a DT and Zella drop of a big, big magnitude here in the main. Is that just a Harsom's pylon? No, never mind. Sometimes, if you're a Protoss, you can be really sneaky and just warp in a pylon. I don't know if anybody's ever tried that. Sometimes you can disguise it in the base. If you put a pylon next to their pylon, Sometimes they just won't notice. It is uh, one of the funniest things you can ever accomplish. This was a really good attack by Harstam. These zealots actually did a lot of work. They killed a lot of pylons off. Big, big block. These are unpowered right now. Tempests are pretty far ahead, but there's no blink for the opponent. A couple of hallucinated uh, units here are going to be able to help soak up a bit of damage. But these colossus are going down really fast. No, my army. So all the Colossus go down in a heap. But MC is down slightly in supply. Tempest are still wailing away. Warp Prism from MC. Trying to warp in a few extra units here off the pylon. Just zealots. Looks like MC is going to hold just fine here. And Harstam loses a ton of supply. And all of those Archons that went down. Sorry, I was trying to control with half a hand as I was drinking a beer. Hmm. Zealot legs are finished, so these units might as well turn around and fight stuff. He's going to try to get away with the Immortal, but it will go down. 
So MC is just going to march now. He doesn't have a ton of units, but he does have a warp prism at the front. Couple of Archons here with 3-1. It is 3-0-0 for MC, so he's got less armor. But he's got some very high DPS units here. Tempests are awesome, but you do have to focus fire down important units with it. Otherwise, they're essentially a waste. Knock down Archons really fast. And it looks like MC is just going to be able to roll through here again. Big stock that Hearthstone put into having a big Colossus amount. I'm actually impressed with how fast MC was able to get out enough Tempest to do this damage. I didn't think it was going to be as effective. DT's action here do not do not look like there's any detection. Still a GG from Hearthstone. These guys may have been able to hold it out, but with this base dying off... Yeah, could he made something of it? Tough to say. Great play out of MC though, using those Tempests to really take out the Colossus. The Colossus is what Harsom was banking a lot in that game. Seiko StarCraft, thanks everybody for watching, and we'll talk with you later.